And of course, topical issues that are affected by all these things are rights to trial by jury, uh, the presumption of innocence. Well, of course, the whole point about the rule of law is that a jury decides, and it's not about the absolute offence so much as the intent. What was the person's intent? Very important. Right of self-defence, uh, the Ministry of Justice, that's an absolute anathema. How can we have a minister in charge, a minister for justice? Go away, I don't want you. I'd much rather have our Lord Chancellor and an independent judiciary. What you're doing is politicizing. It is a politicization of the judiciary and they need to be a completely independent branch from the executive government. <laughs> Absolutely critical. The House of Lords, of course, has to be the, the Supreme Court of the land. It's part of the Constitution. It's, it's declared so in the Bill of Rights. Uh, it's been part of the custom, but now we're getting a Supreme Court. The Supreme Court does not allow any appeal into our House of Lords. That I deem to be unconstitutional. I've asked a QC about it. He agrees with me that in that extent it is un unconstitutional. ID cards, uh, DNA, emergency powers. The emergency powers these governments, have, recent governments have been granting themselves is phenomenal. Uh, administration, we see our lives being managed in every detail about everything. Where's the liberty? How is that maintaining me and my uh, spiritual and civil rights and properties? Surely that means I've got liberty and privacy um, to a degree. Um, what it doesn't mean is that you can adversely affect your neighbor. Anyway, administration, devolution, fishing, poor fishermen having their boats burnt on the beaches to comply with EU rules and regulations. Fox hunting, was that a matter for the government? Not in my book, there's nothing to do with them. Uh, right to roam. Landowners weren't compensated for the land, so suddenly if you happen to have a nice property, you might suddenly find that there's a, there's, there's a right near your house uh, and it d detracts from you. Well, the only way that the, the, the Constitution allowed uh, compulsory purchase and so on was the quid pro quo, that there was suitable compensation. It couldn't be just deemed. There had to be another reason for it. Uh, alternative medicines have come under stick. Um, because, of course, of all the, the question of uh, qualifying the medicines, and, and this is much driven by the EU, um, art and copyrights and much more all now complying with the EU directives. And when it came to oaths of office, um, that block of stone was rather important, is not it? It reminds us all, uh, once a year, of just how many uh, people and how we see, sadly, their old uh, chaps from the Great War and the Last War are now... Uh, beginning to fade, but when it came to oaths of office, you could be in a trench and you could have shells throwing chunks of metal a couple of feet long, glowing red hot at 100 miles an hour past your ear, and you couldn't get out the trench. Is it surprising that people went weak at the knees? And they were deemed not to be holding up to their oaths of office and their loyalty to the crown, and some of them were shot for it, as we know. So that's quite a thing, isn't it? And there's a memorial to all those that lost their lives. And of course, the Magna Carta uh, and the Bill of Rights, the sure foundation for which so many gave their lives, so that we may preserve our liberty under the rule of law, our law for all future generations. And we're only keepers of it. We should be handing intact this liberty to the future generations. The Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights was described by Sir William Blackstone as the undoubted duty of the King. All that I've talked about here is current statute law. There are copies of those statutes. You'll find it all there. So what I believe you now know is that when somebody says we have no written constitution, you know that's false. We have a constitutionally limited monarchy. Well, you know that's true. They had to sign a coronation uh, oath contract and they had to abide by the statute law. Monarch accepts the advice of ministers. Yes, but what happens if it's unconstitutional vice advice? They don't talk about that and they never mention it. And of course the answer is they should never proffer it in the first place. To Parliament may make or repeal any law. Or can it make laws uh, for taxation without representation? Because a lot of people say, oh, the Bill of Rights, that's old hat, isn't it? But actually the things enumerated in it are very fundamental. 
and they're as valid today as they were when it was made. They knew, those people knew in those generations, they were very, very clever, and they knew how to word it so as to keep it there uh, to be strength for us. And uh, so it's well worth studying. Um, but it's quite clear that there shouldn't be cruel and unusual punishments or fines and forfeitures of particular persons before conviction are illegal and void. Um, in effect, the, the fact that you can't convict anyone without or, or can't punish anyone without a conviction and you can't impose uh, a, a bail or fines on them, if you think about the interplay of those two things, it means there's a right to silence. There has to be, because what happens if you say nothing? There's no right on the Crown to impose upon you, in my view. Uh, so the Crown in Parliament is said to be sovereign, and of course it's obviously under the Constitution, but under the Constitution it's always the supreme rule of law that counts. Uh, no Parliament may bind its successor. Well, they try to use this argument to say that they can't look like write laws um, because all Parliaments are of equal power, and therefore a later Parliament may come along and could write a law um, to bind another Parliament. Well, you might say, well, is that permanent or not? Well, the actual permanence of it is a red herring. Yes, all right, you can say, well, things ought to be able to be changed. We shouldn't have to go on in dead man's shoes for ever and ever. Um, but on the other hand, if the things that were done in the past were wise and have been kept on the statute book, surely those are the rules that we should be governed by until such time as we need to change them. And then, before we do anything against them, we should thoroughly debate the consequences of their change. And that's where it doesn't happen. Um, so nothing happens. So no parliament may bind its successor is frequently quoted by many people as assuming that uh, there can be nothing to control parliament. But yet the crown is part of parliament. It's interesting, the legal definition of parliament is the lords, the commons and the queen. That's parliament assembled. It's not just the house of commons, it's a tripartite body. And uh, of course the whole thrust of this thing of administrative law, as Hewitt pointed out, was to separate the people from their courts because the administrator, wants to, the administrator wants to get control. And so that's the great thing. The power of a jury is of vital uh, importance to us. And so I say that this is really a good definition for constitution, that the rule of law, that is our constitutional law, limits the crown and thus restricts the crown in parliament and defines the role of parliament and government and its relationship to the people and the separation of powers. Very, very important. William Pitt, 1st Earl of Chatham, instead of the arbitrary power of a king, we must submit to the arbitrary power of the House of Commons. If this be true, what benefit do we derive from the exchange? Tyranny, my lords, is detestable in every shape, but none so formidable as where it is assumed and exercised by a number of tyrants. But, my lords, this is not the fact. This is not the Constitution. We have a law of Parliament, we have a statute book, and we have the Bill of Rights. Powerful stuff. So, under the rule of law, Plainly, there can be no divine right of politicians. Very important. <laughs> and my final screen, ladies and gentlemen, I've overshot a bit, I know, but uh, Sir Winston Churchill, when talking about Magna Carta, and when in subsequent ages the state, swollen with its own authority, has attempted to ride roughshod over the rights or liberties of the subject, it is to this doctrine that appeal has again and again been made, and never as yet without success. So we need to appeal to that doctrine. Thank you very much. <laughs>